Yay. Well, I'm so happy that you're here. Do I call you Tezza or Tessa? Always the question. I First know. First question. Like, I, 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 I had to. Um, it's whatever you want. But I actually like introduce myself now as Tezza. You do. Like because it was a nickname my friends gave me. Uh-huh. And that's how it became like my brand name. Yeah. So I had like all my best friends calling me that. And then now it's like kind of my name. My mom even is like calling me Tessa at this point. That's so. amazing. So where did the nickname come from? My best friend in college, actually, like it's not even that cute of a story. She just always called me like my middle name's Marie and she called me Tessa Marie. It was like always the the nickname. Uh huh. And so I had a blog, like a million different blogs at the time. And then one day I was like, oh, Tessa's kind of fun. Like I love the double Z's. It's kind of different, kind of like an alter ego to like showcase my creative work. So yeah, here we are. I love that. Yeah. So a million different blogs that you had, like what were all that were they like fashion? Were you on Tumblr? Like when was this? All the things girly. Um, like I actually started my first blog when I was 14. So that's amazing. It's long ago. I'm like vent- old at this point. Yeah. Um, was it on like Zanga? I don't even like remember how I was mm-hmm. like, I remember feeling like I hacked some code to start it. Yeah. Cause like, you know, you don't really understand the internet at that point, mm-hmm. but Like the first one was called Brain Litter and it was like kind of everything from, I was a songwriter and a musician. So it was like poems and pictures and kind of just like inspiration. I did Tumblr and like when I was 16, Facebook came out and I actually got like big on Facebook um, as a photographer. Like I started growing like a following on Facebook. That was like kind of when I first started seeing like, oh, you can like talk and build a community online. Mm Because when I was blogging, I wasn't really doing it like how Mm-hmm. You would Not if you like were doing it as a career. With, or, yeah. I just didn't even understand how to do it. I just used it as like a place to post. So Totally. Yeah. So Facebook. Wait, that's amazing. So, so like your no social media audience dates back to Facebook. It does. Yeah. It's that's like, incredible. It wasn't like that bigger. I don't even, you know, at the time mm-hmm. it felt big to me. Totally. In I'm my sure it was big. Community. Though. Yeah. Wait, that's amazing. We have that in common. I started blogging in a way in like middle school. Oh my gosh. But on it. Zanga and also on all these random sites. Like, and I would try to figure out like the coding to do like the font colors and all yes. the different things. Yes, it was so hard. I yeah. like, oh, yeah. It fun. was so hard back then because there was just no blueprint. No. But it was rewarding. It was like, yes. if you got that color, you were like, yes, I nailed it. Yes, <laughs> totally. And I would do these like fading colors, like the ombre type of thing. I don't even know how I did that. We need to bring it back. I know we do. That sounds cute. Yes. Okay. So you were always creative and always into photography and writing. Yes. You know, I just love it. I think I, um, I mean, I always talk about this, but it's like my family, everyone, that's just what we do. Art, creativity, entrepreneurs. It's like, Mm -hmm. if you don't do that, you're kind of like the weird one in the family. Mm -hmm. So like everyone from cousins to siblings to parents, it's like in the blood. So It was really, um, I feel like, such a beautiful way to grow up. I didn't realize how special it was till I got older. Um, Just to have a place where, like, being creative was really welcomed and, like, encouraged. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, like, when I got older, I was like, oh, wow, like, other people don't think like this or appreciate it like this or even think you can be successful and creative. Yeah. Like, that just was. Now I feel like that's kind of a mindset. Yeah. But back in the day, that was just really not... Um, what people were thinking. No. um, Yeah, like, I I mean, I did music for a lot of, lot of years um, and loved that. Still might go back. You never know. Yeah, Um, that would be so cool. (laughs) Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, But photography really, like, was what, where everything came together for me. I was like, okay, I loved making clothes. I loved storytelling. And when I kind of picked up a camera and could, could say so much with just one picture, I was like, this is what I want to be. So I started, I studied um, photography in school and that's when like Instagram came out, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Then that's when everything really kind of like picked up and started rolling. So you started your Instagram. Was it like the beginning of the Instagram days, which was like 2011, like 12, those kind of eras. That's why. Yeah. yeah. And like Mm -hmm. I loved posting because no one I knew had Instagram. Uh huh. So it was like, oh, cool. I can like connect with all these other people that have this. It was just like this amazing escape for me yeah as a creator and then I was in photography school and all the photographers were like this is so dumb now everyone thinks they're artistic and Mm -hmm. yada yada and I was like wait no this is so cool like everyone's looking at the world differently 
And now people are paying more attention to what we're doing because like we have so much to say as, you know, photographers and creating these brands. And so that's kind of how, you know, building my social media, um, like community was really about, I don't know that I thought this quite at the beginning, but I just, I was so obsessed with sharing photography and taking all of these pictures and like people being just asking so many questions, how can I do this too? And I realized like, wow, that's actually what I love is like helping people also create Mm -hmm. and getting them excited about it because everyone should be able to feel the way I did growing up. Like this should be an inclusive space. And so that's kind of how I, I feel like has always kind of stayed with me from the beginning to, to even who I am now and what I'm doing now. That's so cool. You're so lucky that you grew up in such a creative family. That's something that I wish I had. Like I'm kind of like the creative one in my family. And it's just amazing to look around and have like your parents and your siblings and your cousins all doing different creative things. Yeah. It's really inspiring. It was it was really special. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing that you mentioned. So you went to Parsons, right, for photography? I started there for fashion design. Okay. Yeah. And then I actually switched. It's a, uh-huh. I can get all thing. into it if you okay, want. Okay. So I went, I went to the new school also. Oh, you did? Oh. I went for creative writing. Oh, and um, I had a similar experience to you where I was actually there for grad school. And everybody said, and I was already on Instagram and I already had my blog. This was like 2013 and 2014. And everybody there was saying, this is not writing. This is not publishing. That's Instagram. Like, how could anyone on Instagram think that that's real poetry or like that's not edited? And, you know, it was just so looked down upon. And that was something that I related to that I've heard you talk about before too, how you really embraced the social media space of creativity. The old schools were like, no, this is just, you know, some, some app. Yeah. It is so crazy. I feel like, you know, that's pretty common in, I'm sure it's happening now again, like to Mm -hmm. other people, whatever they're doing, it's going to end up being so amazing and beautiful. And like people are like, duh, Mm should have thought like that. Uh So it's so like cool to be able to look back now that we've been in the space for so long and be like, yeah, we were right. We followed our intuition. And I think, you know, for sure, I had friends making fun of me. I had, you know, people saying this is not a real career. That's just like common. But that's just people that are jealous that you're doing what you want to do. And exactly. I think like, yeah. if you're listening and you feel that way, you just just keep going because it's going to turn yeah. into something good. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Absolutely. So then, okay, so you were doing social media. And then when did it kind of take a turn into something that you were doing full time? Um. Well, I was really focused on photography, but like social media was just the way I was connecting with people through it. It wasn't like a a career per Mm -hmm. se at that point. Um, My husband and I, we got married and I was like, I got to get out of Utah. We were living in Utah at the time and I want to move to New York. And he was like, let's do it. We we had no reason to really move there other than just just calling our name. And so we moved there and I had like, I don't know, probably like 50,000 followers and a brand reached out and was like, we want to do a collab. And I made like a couple hundred bucks. I was like, great, I can put money towards rent because rent is so expensive in New York. And then an agency reached out and they were like, we'd like to represent you. And I thought it was like a scam. Uh huh. Because like, you know, modeling agencies back in the day that would reach out. Oh, totally. Were like, totally yeah, scams. like, is this real? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So I took the meeting anyway. I was like, whatever, let's see what this is about. And then when they were like explaining like how I could run this as a business, I was like, oh, okay. And now I see the potential here. So I started really taking hosting seriously. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the, so that was in like 2016. Um, and yeah, so that was really kind of like where I started just leaning into posting every single day, connecting with my community, like launching products, mm-hmm. Um all, yeah, the, all things. the things yes. yeah the collage kits you had oh, you, have, you, you know it all I, I know it. all the things you <laughs> have your the sunglasses which are amazing oh, thank you and then the app yeah okay so I am like the biggest user of the Teza mm-hmm. app I'm obsessed thank you along with all the other millions <laughs> um, of people we're trying like, we how does it that. feel to have curated an entire creative landscape for social media Wow, wow, wow. That was, that's a big compliment. I don't know it's about true, that. It's true though. I mean, your style uh-huh. now, like that has become so many people's style because you've shared it through your yeah. app. Well, that's really sweet. I honestly, that's the biggest compliment to me because I just think when I, 
I remember like when I realized I had something different and people were recreating pictures like I was creating pictures and I was like, okay, people are really interested in this space and wanting to like push their limits. And so many people would just send me messages like you made me feel like I could create and like I now quit my day job and I'm doing this and like all, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and that is just like gold to my yes. ears. I'm like, yes, my mission, you know, to help everyone kind of like live this art of life that I really believe in. Um, but the app really, you know, has been probably the most fun thing I've ever done because I realized maybe even more than just the act of like viewing a picture and like getting a final result. Like I actually love the creative process and like sharing it with people and, and watching other people have their own process. And Mm -hmm. so being even just like a little piece of someone's process is so cool. Yeah. And making a product that, you know, someone needs and uses every day and um, like supports their careers. And it's just been like so much fun. And I'm constantly like having to up my creative skills. (laughs) People are like, we want this. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like it's time for more. I think I can make it. Like, let me go try, you know? So it's so fun to have a product that the community is so involved in too. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's the cool thing is you guys are always updating it. Like it's never just kind of remaining the same. There's always new filters. There's always new like campaigns, just really cool things that you're doing in there. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. Yeah. So I appreciate What's that. What's your favorite filter at the moment? Um, my favorite, like it's a combo. So I love in the film shop, we have disposable. Mm-hmm. And so I love using disposable because it actually gives that kind of film look if you turn it down to like 20. And then I add a little cocoa on top. Mm-hmm. And so it just kind of gets this perfect blend. If you use it on a flash photo, it's like chef's kiss. Ooh, yeah. Okay, I need to try it. Yeah. Okay, so I always use vintage. And yes, then I bring it like down a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I love, you know, it just makes everything pop. Like the skin tone. It just, yeah. I just love With that your one. Eyes. Yes, I can see that my for you. Fave. That's and cute. then I'll put a little bit of, um, I don't even know how to say this word, but like cla- classe. Classa. Classa. It's classe. It depends what, like it's actually German and it's a German film camera that I oh, am cool. obsessed with. But, so you would say classe, but mm-hmm. I, everyone says classe. Okay. Classa. I yeah. don't know. Whatever yeah, so I, like, I like both of those. Yeah. I like the warm one and the yes. other one. Okay, and then cute. I'll bring it down a little bit. Like love. I use it all. I use it for everything. Okay, good. Yeah. I love to hear it. Yeah. We're working on a lot of new like um, video content oh stuff. cool so i'm excited about that which is like a fun new challenge yeah that's so exciting yeah. and what's it like working with your husband because he's the developer right and then you guys have created this business together we have yes i'm so like lucky that i get to work with somebody that i don't know it's like i, I definitely when we just were shooting together when we started in our careers working together that was more challenging than it is now. Um, so if you're struggling, don't worry. Mm-hmm. We all go through it, even still <laughs> yes. to this day. Um, but like when we both share such like a, the same vision for the product, it's so fun to work together because we're so passionate about it. We could talk about it all day, mm-hmm. every day. So we just have, it's like, sometimes we're like, this is so fun. I can't believe this is our job, you know? Yeah. And he really um, taught me so much just because he started as a developer and... I, he, I kind of like writ, wrote him off as not very creative in the beginning, which uh-huh. was so like against everything I, I believe when so it taught me a good lesson. But he, the way he would talk about code was just so poetic. And he's like, you create something out of nothing. And that's why I want to do this because, you know, and I was just like so inspired. And so when we came up with the idea to, to start the app, it was really um, such a good combination of the like things yeah. we we're both passionate about. And still to this day, like, I think we feel like we, you know, it still feels like we just started it. You know? Yeah, that's amazing. So it's fun. And what are your roles? Like, do you guys have like a CEO role or that kind of thing? We're both kind of like co-CEOs at this point. Um, we'll see how that goes. We're really hiring a lot of people right now. So Ooh. it's like fun and stressful all at the same yeah. time. And managing a team is yeah. like, oh, it's hard. It really is. When mm-hmm. your job goes from like getting to just create and make mm-hmm. fun stuff to having to manage People are just answer messages all day. You're like, this isn't what I want to do. No, I've had, I've had but, that experience. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It comes with like growing up. It and, comes with it. Yeah. Yes. So I can't complain too much, but it's, um, yeah, right now we both kind of do that. He definitely handles more of the product side of things and I handle more of the marketing creative side mm-hmm. of things. But at the end of the day, we kind of are married in, this, mm-hmm. in that. We're, we're actually yeah. married and then we're, <laughs> we're married in, in, yes. the, in the things we do. But yeah. And you guys have known each other since you were 
born, right? Yes, it's so That is my crazy. favorite thing. It's wild. Yeah. We, yeah, we literally have videos at each other's first birthday parties. Like, I was at the hospital when his brother was born. When we were, you know, kids, like, uh-huh. we go all the way back. So That is the dream. It's really So fun. do your parents, are your parents and his parents, like, so close? Yeah. They're like, well, they both still live in Utah, so they'll uh-huh. call us and be like, we're going out to dinner tonight. Or we always spend Christmas Eve all together. And yeah, it's really fun. And That's we all so have special. siblings that are, like, similar ages, so... So cool. Yeah. Wow. You never know. Maybe our kids are going to get married. We'll see. I know, like, right? Stay tuned. Coco and Atticus. <laughs> we gotta... They're only one month apart. And, okay. Okay. So here's a crazy story for you. Because I've always been such a fan of everything that you do. And then when you announced your pregnancy and I was pregnant, I was so excited. <laughs> and I remember trying to figure out like, well, I wonder when she's due. And like, we're right around the same time. Like, yeah. I think I was like four weeks behind you. And then when you had Coco... What was the day? Was it like November? November 22nd. 20, yeah. So November 22nd. I thought I was in labor on November 22nd. Really Shut early, up. like a month early. Oh I was gosh. having contractions, but then I learned I had something called prodromal contractions for a month. So that was like the first day. That sounds So early. I was in the hospital. <laughs> it was sorry. awful. No, I was just in the hospital that day, like trying to see, am I like in the early stages of labor? Right. And I wasn't, but I was like seeing on the monitor all these like women who were actually deep in labor and I was so jealous because I'm like I'm so (laughs) done I'm so done I can't do this anyway I remember seeing later that day you had given birth on that day and it was just it's been so special to watch from afar the whole journey of like just stepping into motherhood yeah how's it going for you I mean we were just talking about it in the hallway (laughs) yeah having a two an almost two year old (sighs) is a whole different thing Mm -hmm. because you hear about things like I had heard about the terrible twos quote unquote and I just thought it was such a stereotype it's like how could that be true not Not for my perfect (laughs) child like no and it's it's so true and all the stages have been that way yeah but yeah it's been so fun it's It's been so fun the best time of life but wild like the beginning was so hard um just like running a business and not knowing like do I want a full-time nanny like all the things. How All has that things. been for you? No, girl. I mean, every day is just like a question mark. So uh-huh. you're like, I don't yes. know. I'm just winging it. Like, I think she got in trouble at school yesterday. So I'm just like, what am I supposed oh, to she do? In school? Discipline? Yeah. Um, it's like a pre pre school yes, thing. Yes. Uh-huh. She just needs like more kids around. Yeah. So totally. It's good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's going good. I think, you know, motherhood is crazy. And I always knew I wanted to do it. My mom had five kids. That's amazing. And I'm like way behind with just one. She's like chip chop woman. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got it. And she was a yes. career. Like she was my idol growing yeah. up. So I still am like, how did you do it? I don't understand. Um, but yeah, it's it's wild. I don't feel like I have any like great answers other than you just become better at managing your time mm-hmm. and you kind of figure it out as you go. And it's totally. like the coolest, best thing in the world it to is. have somebody... I don't know. Like for me, the experience of having a kid is just every day you wake up and somebody's so happy to be alive and you're just like, yes, Yes. me too. Let's go. Like, let's have fun. Like, why would I be upset about, I don't know, some work thing? Like I can be happy. Totally. Yeah. It reminds you to see the world through their eyes, which is everything's exciting. It really is. Yeah. Atticus this morning, he wakes up, he's throwing all of his toys out of the crib. He's laughing hysterically. (laughs) And I'm like, Wow. Okay. I guess I'm awake. Like, I guess we're on. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, you definitely don't get to like. There's no downtime. Yeah. Or be as spontaneous. True. We can try. Yes, we can try. Well, we can definitely, I feel like if anybody can still live the adventurous life, it's you. I mean, I've Uh seen you like traveling with her in Europe and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. We went to Spain with Atticus. Yeah. You'll be sweating just a little bit more. Yeah. It's it's really hard. It doesn't feel like vacation, (laughs) but you're still living your life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you want more kids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Hopefully. Yes. Yes. You know, you're just grateful that you can get what you can get. Of course. I would love, yeah, love to have one or two. We'll see. Yeah. I don't want to say it too loud. I know. I always said that I wanted three. Yeah. My husband and I, we are always like, 
well, I was the one who always said three and he used to want two. And then he was like, okay, we could have three. Yeah. But after having one, I was like, you know, two is yeah. also fine. Two, like, like two, you have one. You can, yes. s- a car mm-hmm. can stay smaller. Yes. House can stay smaller. Like everything just, it gets yeah. a little harder with three. But totally. But I, I think still, I want three I too. still want three. It goes so fast. Yeah, it does. And yeah. people say to think about when you're older and like, what do you want the, like the Thanksgiving table to look like and yeah. stuff. And I want all all of it. I want True. all the family around. I but know. Do you have siblings? Um, I have half siblings. Okay. So I'm the youngest and I have three half siblings. Yeah, that's, that's that are, well, they're quite a bit older. So okay. I actually grew up kind of like an only child mm-hmm. until they started to have kids. So then I have nieces and nephews um, who are like six years younger than me and then 10 years younger. So we're all over the place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. I think that's yeah, it's like fun having people around on the hall. I mean, you know, we were just talking about this, yeah. but I love to host and have yeah. like people around. So we'll see. I have, you know, obviously my siblings and I are super, super close. And literally my brothers call me every day. I'm like, I don't have time to chat, but I uh-huh. love that you're FaceTiming me literally yeah. every day to ask about what shoes you should wear. But um, That's it's so, so fun. Cute. And I would like, I know Coco, my my daughter would love having yeah. siblings. Like she's basically begging she sees yeah. little kids and she goes up and gives them hugs i'm like that's a little aggressive oh my maybe God. let's like ask for yeah you know? that's how atticus is too okay wait they need to play they, need to they would be yeah. so cute together yeah. um are you the oldest in your family i know i have an older brother okay yeah he's but i'm kind of like the oldest mm-hmm. we're only two i mean we're two years apart so it's mm-hmm. like we're kind of the same yeah the oldest vibe yeah like the i mean the maternal like nurture yeah. that's how yeah. the girls are it's true it's mm-hmm. true yeah so Utah, mm-hmm. I have a question for you about Utah. All of the bloggers, all of the most creative people come out of Utah. What is it? I know. Everyone always asks yeah, this question. And like, I've been with Utah people. We've sat down. We've tried to figure it out. Yes. One, it's like you're really encouraged to. It's because of the Mormon culture. Like everyone does music and stuff growing up. So that kind of instills a little bit of this creative vibe, I think. And then... It's so beautiful there. Mm -hmm. Like, so you kind of just think, wow, I should take a picture of that because Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. So I kind of think there's something about that that's interesting. And then, you know, back in the day, this was what I've heard some of the older bloggers say. So I don't know because I didn't have this experience growing up. But their moms and grandmas and stuff would like do a lot of scrapbooking and, and documenting and stuff like that. And so I feel like, that's how blogging became for them with mm-hmm. like recipes and travel and, and this and that. And so that's why a lot of like them started of uh, like that generation was blogging so much. Uh-huh. That and makes maybe, sense. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And everyone's just like honestly really pretty there. It's weird. I know. Beautiful. So the, yeah, I, I don't it's know. It's wild. Happening. It's like you can see the <laughs> most like successful and popular bloggers. They're always from Utah. Like no matter what. I don't know. There's a there. Well, but no, okay, no, but now, no. now for everybody. But I guess going back like ten years ago True. when it was a newer thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe just a couple people started doing it, and then it became yeah. more known in the community. The yeah, I think just like a couple thing. of the like the big ones got mm-hmm. so big. Totally. Um, but it is interesting. Like this is. I feel like I don't even know why I'm saying this, but if I maybe I shouldn't even say no, it. say it. Well, and just like in Utah, it's so much cheaper to live there, right? So you can have more that seems oh, totally, more luxurious totally. or something. Whereas if you're living in like a more expensive city, yeah. you might be, I don't know, you can't build like that big mm-hmm. of a home, but you I could think in Utah. about that so it maybe all the time. Like it's like, yes. how you're, you know, I don't know. I know. No, I'm like, should I move to Utah? Yeah. Should so I move to like Montana so that yeah. I could like build a beautiful home? Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's so different. So there's maybe and that a little bit sense. of that perception. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also like the small town living or the smaller town living mm-hmm. is fun to follow when you live in a city yeah. too. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You ca- and, and vice versa. Exactly. So. Yeah, it's, it's inspiring yeah. all the way around. Yeah. So yeah. did you grow up Mormon? I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and my family, you know, some of them are still in, some of them are out. I feel like it's cool that, you know, Utah's changing a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and just the culture is getting a little bit more open. Um, since when I grew up there, it was very one way. Mm -hmm. And I, I did move when I was quite young. I lived in New York when I was 16, um, by myself. And that taught me a lot of just about, you know, people and culture and how to think for myself. Um, so I was grateful for that experience because I feel like as I 
got older and was able to make my own choices. Like I, I found my own path and way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was like, I definitely think, you know, growing up with a family being so close was really special. And I don't know if that would have happened. You know, it's like, you don't know your experience yeah. otherwise if totally. you didn't have that. So I am grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. I know it feels like everybody who I've met who's grown up religious or whether any religion really, like usually it's a positive experience of like close family, good values, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot more that comes yeah, with Yeah, well, there's it. a lot more. There's but a, if that's you can a whole focus other, on the good Yeah, things. that's a whole other <laughs> combo. Totally. Yeah. I'm fascinated. Like yeah. I'm fascinated by all things Mormon. I'm fascinated by religion. Like mm-hmm. I'm obsessed. Yeah, so I know. I've, I've actually listened to a couple hole. of your episodes oh, really? about just like, <laughs> well, no, more on just like spiritual, yes, spirituality because yes. I feel like that's been an interesting journey for me. Just kind of tr- yeah, trying and finding so different curious. things. I still don't even know, you mm-hmm. know, where I am, mm-hmm. um, but always kind of searching. So I, I, yes. I find it interesting all the different conversations you have with other people yeah. about that. But yeah. yeah. What has your spiritual journey looked like as you've started to like explore some different stuff? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I haven't even like ever spoken about this in like ever. <gasps> I don't know. I think I definitely know I believe in... Um, like energy. And I think, you know, whatever you're, you're doing is going to live on pretty much in some way, shape or form. And so I, I do love that concept because I think it just inspires me to, to continue to like be my best self and, and live my best life mm-hmm. to kind of like inspire other people around me and um, to leave something good behind. I um, had a sister that passed away when I was 19 and she was 17 and that kind of, I think, for a lot of, like, my family, that brought them closer mm-hmm. to their beliefs. For me, it kind of made me confused. And I was mad, obviously. I was just, like, so young and felt like I knew what I wanted in my life. And then I had no idea what to do. It was like my sister and I were going to, had all these plans, you know. And it really taught me a lesson of just, like, you know, every single day is so beautiful and is a gift. And you you better just take it and and do what you want to do and and follow your you know your dreams. It sounds mm-hmm. so cheesy, but it really is something that it woke me up. Like I was already doing that, but that made me. It left me no choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I I feel like I'm still on that journey. You know, every day I'm just like never second guessing myself, but constantly following my intuition and being open for whatever is you know. Yeah. In front of me and, and, and being open enough to let like those things in, mm-hmm. you know, totally. I don't know. This I is a deep that. question. No, it's an, amazing, an amazing like, answer. <laughs> well, I've heard you, I was listening to you on another podcast. I heard you talk about manifesting and how mm. like you have worked with energy to manifest certain things in your life. And I thought that that was so cool because I'm obsessed with manifestation yeah. and yeah. it makes sense that you have um, kind of harnessed like all of that energy to create the amazing things that you've brought into the world. Mm. I'm like, what? I'm like, what podcast? Okay, it was, it was I need to go back and listen. Oh, okay, okay. Love her. She's yes, a dear friend. She's Dream Bigger podcast. Yes. I was listening to it while I was getting ready today nice. just to kind of like, like be in your energy. Too. And then I saw yeah. that it was two years ago and like, not that that matters, but I'm like, oh, oh we've got like we've lots got of update. updates. We've got update. No, yeah, um, that's interesting. But I, I definitely also think um, like there's this book. What is the book called? This always happens to me. I want to like bring know, up something and I can't, yeah. oh, whatever. Anyway, but I do, th- I do think manifesting is even like I, my mom is so, and not anti, just not like she would never talk about manifesting mm-hmm. or these kinds of things, but she definitely is doing it in, in a different way. Um, and she almost has like no room for believing that it wouldn't like happen. Mm-hmm. Totally. But almost this like, what is the word for it? It's like, I don't know. There's something nice about being naive and being in your 20s. Like if you're in your 20s, take advantage, like take every risk, fail a million times, get messy with it. Just like the older you get, it gets harder to do that. Or you have to like practice ways to stay that um, like removed from societal thoughts. You know, I completely agree. I remember being in my early 20s and just like starting my blog and my brand and I just had no fears. I had no no thought of this isn't going to work out because I also didn't really care if it did or if it didn't. I was right. just like, 
I'm just doing what I love. Yeah. And if I have to like work at Lululemon on the side, like I don't care. Yeah. But now everything is so different. And so yeah. it's harder to like start those new things or invest the time into something if you don't know right. how it's going to turn how out. It's gonna turn out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's also like, I think once something works, like I've had creative ruts. I mean, I'm in one, you know, I'm, it's just never ending kind of. Mm-hmm. And I think the only way to get out is kind of through for mm-hmm. me. Like, it, and so it's going to require, you know, like somebody I'm loving following right now. And she's one of my dear friends. So I feel like I should talk about it. But Amber filler up. <sighs> she's my favorite person. She is the best. And I just think, you know, so watching someone who's succeeded time and time again, and then I'm, you're just watching her like change into these new, new eras and trying new things. And as like a creative person, it's just so cool to watch someone be open and like share that journey mm-hmm. because I'm very, I, I don't know if I would be so willing to share things I'm just trying mm-hmm. out, you know, totally. I feel like, oh, I got, I've got to be good at it first. Yeah. But that's kind of my own like hold up, right? Exactly. But like it's so, I just think it's cool to watch somebody like do that. It is. I know. I get so inspired by her, seeing yeah. her painting, yeah. which she's so good at Amazing. at this point. I know. And like the recipes for the kids. And yeah, I'm like, how do you have time to draw that? Amber, no, I know. Because I can barely even that's like my, cut That's my the daily up. thought. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, how? How is she doing it? <sighs> and just with all the kids and she's, she's got it figured she's out. Got it and figured she's out. so creative and it's so cool. Yeah. And Another Utah mama. Or I guess Arizona. Yes. But mm-hmm. we, I did meet her in Utah. Uh-huh. So to yeah. me, she's Utah. Yeah, I claim totally. her as my own. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so who are some other people that you are inspired by? Mm. So many people. I mean, right now, as a, as I've kind of shifted into this CEO role and like having to run a business, I'm kind of looking at different inspiration than I've ever really, you know, usually I've been leaning just heavily into creative, but now I'm kind of like, oh, who are, you know, leaders and thought leaders and people that are able to run a business well, because I think I, I have never this, I, I mean, I hate saying this. I've never been like an employee of mm-hmm. somebody. I've always worked for myself, started doing photography when I was 16. So it was like, I started my yeah, own little career. So cool. I mean, I had clients and they were like bosses, I guess. But um, I, and so leading a team and and knowing how to, you know, make people feel like they're seen and, and feeling great about their job is something I've never really had to to do or felt the other side of. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's a new journey. And so I'm looking at a lot of different, I think there are so many amazing CEOs out there that are really cool. Mm-hmm. And also as like a woman, I think, you know, we're now such leaders in just the creative space. Mm-hmm. And so bringing other women up and making them feel like seen and supported is really important for me as well. But, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's so true. You're kind of, well, you're always going to be in the creative, but also CEO life is like this whole other er- yeah. avenue to get inspiration from. Yeah. That's so cool. A shift. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I got to, I got to dive in, you yeah, know, totally. Which is fun. It's fun. New challenge, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not quite, I don't feel like I've arrived. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's an, it's an ever expanding journey. That yes. whole, all of it. Yeah. Um, you know, you have, I mean, I do know. Yeah, I mean, know to some degree, I do. So the Forbes article that came out about you guys recently about your app, the literal millions of people who use it every month, that was so cool. And I feel oh, like, was you. that like a huge milestone moment for you? It was. It really was. We've been always kind of like, not under the radar, um, but I think a lot of, you know, when we would go to meetings or like talk to other companies, it'd be like a bunch of men in suits and they'd be like, cute, you have an app and you're an influencer. Cute, mm-hmm. super cute. And regardless of, you know, then we would start saying, you know, our numbers and how we're competing in the space. And then people would be like, oh, okay, I'll maybe take a listen, mm-hmm. you know? So it just really kind of hit us that like, we are ready to not just be like, you know, a side note, but also a place for everyone to come and feel inspired and like really actually be a company that is going to grow and be here for Mm -hmm. a while and compete with all these other companies. Yeah. So that was really exciting. And also just, you know, I think when we came into the space, um, all the other apps were built by a bunch of dudes that were just like really into tech and really into like tools. And, you know, we Mm -hmm. wanted to make an app that was kind of had this female flair because one, I feel like, you know, the gals are running the show. Totally. And so I wanted something that spoke to, you know, that group of people. And then also just that felt as fun as the act of creating. I think every other app was very serious. We wanted it to be like, 
fun and exciting and yeah. have color and be, you know, just a little bit different and have like a brand and an identity behind it. So mm-hmm. kind of being recognized for that was was really cool. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. I know the color, like all of it, it's very feminine, which yeah. I love. Like there's yeah. the pops of red and like, yeah, everything about it is amazing. Oh, thank you. And just even like when you say, like we say like funny little things. And yeah, that's It's true. not just like... And the way we name our filters, we've always kind of really put like branding and name behind them rather than just like zero totally. one, zero two, you know? Tr- yeah, totally. Um, so it's been fun. And I feel like, you know, we're kind of really excited about things we're working on next year. We're um, doing a lot of really cool collaborations with brands and creators and specific people and highlighting like their creativity and bringing it into that. So Ooh, it's tough to come. I can't that. wait to see. Yeah. Yeah, That's we'll amazing. See. Yeah. Well, well, you should be so proud because all of it is incredible. I mean, back at you. The, thank I you. thank you for having me on of here. Course, this is so fun. Of course. I'm inspired by you all the I, time. Same. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of the rapid fires yes. that I ask everyone who comes on. Okay. I'm nervous. Sun, moon, and rising. Okay, wait. We just Which did we this. just talked about, so I, I can tell you what it is. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, you're an Aries yes. with a Leo rising and yes. a Taurus moon. That's right. Yeah. And I was saying... To Tezza before we started, of course, you're a Taurus moon because like your home is stunning. Like you're all about luxury and aesthetic and all the beautiful things. Very Taurus. What can and I Taurus say? Tauruses, they love know. for it's their just... home space to yes. be like. But then Leo rising is like why you're so confident and extroverted. And of course, same with the Aries. Mm-hmm. Aries is passionate, fire. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of fire, a lot of fire. Yes. You and your husband both. And Aries. my daughter. <sighs> oh my God. Wait, what? Is, oh yeah. She's, she's a, a Sagittarius. Oh yeah. yeah. Just like Atticus. That's why they oh, have their like huggers. She's like the first <laughs> day of Sag and he's the last day of oh my Sag. Gosh. Yeah. Closing that yeah. window. We love it. I know. I was like... I have to, he has to be a Sag. And he was Wait, literally so when was he born? December 21st. Okay. Oh, wow. So okay. he's the last three hours of Sagittarius season. Okay. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Love it. Yeah. He had to be a Sag. <laughs> um, do you know your human design? No. We'll have to look it up. I know. I've looked mm-hmm. it up before, but I can never yeah. remember. I tell you, I'm so bad Yeah, no, stuff. I'd be so curious. I wonder. What What would you, what would I you guess? I think you would be a manifesting generator or a manifester. If I had to guess. Is, is one called a... Generator? Are you a reflector? No, no. I'm projector? Not. No. Okay, those are the five. We'll have to look it so up. So I think if I'm a manifesting me, generator. I think, I think you, you are too. Yeah. I think you are. I mean, you give There's me... There's the other test where it's like I'm a... Oh my gosh. See, my brain doesn't work. Is that today. like the Enneagram or there's... Um, it's like I'm the entertainer. That's not oh, the word. Oh, right. There's the, the... What is that test called? A different one. I don't know. Shelby, do you know? The Enneagram? Oh, yeah, uh huh. But then no, there's one. I know what you mean with like the entertainer but or what's the. the word? It's like the. Myers-Briggs. Oh, the Myers Briggs. Oh, guys, I don't know. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> My friends always I know say to me, take about. this yeah, test. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, that's what I am. Uh-huh. But I forget about it. Yeah, no, there's a bunch of cool. I could see you being the entertainer. But I got to do the the human design because yes. everyone always references that one. Yeah. So. Okay, I'm gonna do it again just yeah. to make sure. I can't wait. You got to tell me what it is. Okay. Um, who are your mentors? I would say my biggest mentor is probably my mom. And she's just, I've watched her build a business from the ground up. So it just, even without her having to tell me, I'm, she's, I watched her and I still watch mm-hmm. her. She's just like a fire. She's a, a Leo. So, oh yeah. my God. All she the is fire. fire. <laughs> yes. My sister was an Aries. My brother's an Aries. It's a lot of fire. Oh I'm my God. That's wild. Um, I don't know. I actually like really... And looking for a new mentor in my life. I don't know. I, I don't even know where to start or mm-hmm. how to find somebody that I yeah. feel like I can lean on or be connected to like mm-hmm. that. But do you have any suggestions yeah. for me? I know. I'm, I'm going to think about it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I love that. Well, yeah, your mom sounds amazing. And I've seen her in your photo. Oh, She's yeah. beautiful. You look so much like her. Oh, you think? I think so. As I've gotten older, I do, for mm-hmm. sure. But as I was younger, everyone was like my dad. But, oh, yeah. You know, same mm-hmm. with Coco. I'm like, I see me in there somewhere. I'm oh, coming. yeah. I think she looks like you. Well, she looks a, like a cross, for sure. Yeah. But I see you, for sure. Okay. I like it. I'll mm-hmm. take it. Yeah. Atticus, when he was first born, he was identical to my husband. I, I mean, like that's what everybody are. said. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, literally identical to me. Like... He, we're twins. And I don't know if it's just me who thinks that. I mean, I know it's not just me, but yeah. like I think it the most. Yeah. But he looks just like But you're like seeing yourself in your kids. So I you're am. Like, huh? Yeah. Sometimes it's... I look at him and I'm like, that's literally my face when yeah. I was a baby, when yeah. I was a kid. 
And like crazy. the expressions in them. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just yes. wild. Yeah. I know. It's so crazy. It's fun. Yes. Um, if you could be in a room with three people, living or dead, who would they be? Gosh. Okay. Annie Leibowitz. I'm like, she was, I remember I wrote in my journal in photo school. I was like, I'm going to be like her one day. And I yes. like signed it. I feel like I like cut myself and like blood, <laughs> blood said it. Not really, but it felt like that in yes. my brain. I love her, love her work. Um, she's been a big inspiration. Um, Stevie Nicks, uh, also a big inspiration on the music front. And I think like the, this is a double, double whammy, but the white stripes. Ooh. Like I would love because, and they'd need to be playing me a song if they were in the room as well. But it's like, you know, I love Jack White. Great. But like the white stripes. I don't know if they're ever going to be together again. So that would be yeah. a, a fun combo. That's such a good one. I don't know. Those are so random. That's yeah. just what came to no, the mind. No, those are good. Well, that's the musician and you coming out. Yes. I think it'd be so cool if you did like release a song or like, I don't know, in some way got I back know. into we'll music. We'll bring it back. I feel like, you know, during the beginning, like right before COVID happened, we were going to kind of bring it back. Uh-huh. But then COVID. So yeah, maybe now. Oh. You give me Daisy Jones vibes. Oh, gosh. Keep it coming. I'll yeah. take it. Thank you. But She's I really, so cool. yeah, I really like even your personality. Like it's Daisy Jones. I okay. mean, you're, I don't know if you watched the show. I did. Like I loved you're it, a yes. grounded version of Daisy Jones. She's a little unhinged. <laughs> I wish but, like, I was more unhinged. The best things like her, about her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel that. I feel yeah. that. Yeah. No, we'll see. It's might so come cool. back. I feel like music was kind of the first. Well, music in general, you just, it's so cool because it brings so many people together over, you know, mm-hmm. this one piece of content, like a yeah. song that, you know, no one can feel like or think about it the same, but they all like love this one song. And exactly. that's kind of how I started my creative journey, even with like fashion and and photos. So it all kind of bleeds into the same. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can imagine. Yeah. And where can everyone find you? Um, I'm like, what's my name? Uh, <laughs> uh, my Instagram is Teza.Barton, B-A-R-T-O-N. And you can find our products on shopteza.com. And if you want to download the app, it's um, just type in Teza to the app store. Best app ever. We love it. And if, yes. if there's something you guys want, let me know. I'm here. I'm yeah, here for the girls and totally. the guys. Don't worry. I know. We got to come up with some fun requests. Yeah, please. I yes. love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This was thank so you. fun. I yeah. could talk to you forever. The same. I'm like, didn't we just start? I know. So and you're welcome back on anytime. Thank you. Thanks for having yes. me. Thank you.